Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Jared Lawal. I'm the content curator with netplus.com, and uh, I'm so happy that I'll be guiding you through today's webinar, which is the third edition of our digital transformation process for SMEs. Uh, we've done this for three straight months, and uh, we're, we're really so thankful that many of you keep coming back. Um, also, many thanks to Business Day for collaborating with us, and thank you for your patience. It is always a delight to have your support. Um, today's edition is so special because it is in honor of International Women's Month and celebrating the many milestones that lots of women achieve every day. We have selected some of the most influential female leads in their respective industries, and I'll be introducing them to you very shortly. But first, um, I just want to highlight what the focus of today is all about. Uh, change is such an integral part of embracing and adapting to a future that, without a doubt, will be immersed in technology and technology processes. Digital transformation is no easy phenomenon to take on, especially for smaller businesses, but it is worth it. Um, it is why we as a company dedicate our time and our resources to enlighten as many Nigerian businesses as we can. Uh, the truth is that we can scale through the effects of the coronavirus pandemic on scale if we support each other. So as we delve into today's topic, which is partnering with technology to supercharge your business, I want you all to pay attention to a few things. The first is why technology is such a great enabler. The second is exploring tech solutions to help grow your business. And uh, finally, understanding the security concerns that come with embracing technology. So I do hope that you learn a thing or two from our esteemed team of panelists and that you know with this you have with this you have the confidence to make decisions that get your business to where you want it to be um, if you have any questions while the discussion goes on please please feel free to send via chat on zoom or to our social media um, handle netplus.com for instagram facebook and linkedin uh, or business day ng for instagram and twitter and uh, business media for business day media for Facebook. And we'll be sure to attend to them at the end of this session. If we can't, we'll respond to them after um, the, the webinar is over. Uh, please remember to keep your microphones on mute to avoid any disruptions at this time. Now, without further ado, we have one panelist who isn't here, but hopefully she joins us as soon as possible. Uh, first, I have the delectable Akiola Ibukun, head of customer finance at Piggyvest. Um, She's well versed in the finance in finance management and an expert in customer acquisition and retention. Akela, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Okay, we have a mock too to with us. Um, uh, she's the CEO of IBES. I hope I called that correctly. She's a software designer, she's a techpreneur and a public speaker. Um, her company trains software developers and develops software solutions for underserved communities. Is there anything you don't do? Hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> if, if it's software, I do it. So there you yeah. go. Yeah. All right. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. So um, next, we have the beautiful Simi Afolabi Jumbo, product specialist with Pay Start Payments. Um, she's an expert in helping customers grow their businesses by expanding their knowledge of solutions and product offerings. Simi, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. And finally, the ever creative Timmy Tokwe Williams, founder and CEO of Matt Wayne and our guest business owner today. She left with guys, she left KPMG, KPMG to pursue a career and fashion. And now she's received so many accolades for her strides in the industry. How about a bold move? How did you do that? <laughs> Thank you for the invitation. Well, I guess I did it. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> no, no, like well, I said, I guess hey, I did hey, it. Thanks for, thanks for being here with us. <laughs> um, so as you can see, guys, we have a, a, a marriage of, of brilliant women, strong women to enlighten us today. So we are so fortunate to have um, have to have, you know, taking their time to do this. So without further ado, and without me ranting on, let's get into it. Um, my first question is for Omokak. 
um, we've been talking about how change is important in today's world, but I think I want to know more, more business and uh, more business owners would, would like to know why is change so important in today's tech driven business environment. First of all, um, I think everybody has heard the saying, um, the only constant in life is change. You know, technology changes very quickly. Uh, you know, these days, as it were, it's not like someone said, people don't go online anymore. People live online, you know? And so technology affects every single area of life. Change is constant. Technology changes often. It affects uh, your company as a business. You know what I mean? If you don't keep up with tech, especially in today's world, if we think that, for example, between January uh, 2020 and January this year, 19 million more people in Nigeria alone started you know, using technology and social media. That's change, you know? If you don't keep up with that, if you are not innovative on top of your game, then obviously you will be left behind. You won't be making as much money as uh, you would hope for. And you won't, you know I mean? There's a large um, number of, the market is huge out there. If it, so it's, it's, it's vitally important that you not only use technology, adopt it, but you are on top of it and you keep changing with the trends. You know, everybody's doing digital marketing. If you, if you are like, oh my gosh, I'm still going to be doing traditional only, then obviously you are missing out. So change is key. You know, it's, it drives and affects all areas, all facets of uh, life and business. You know, that's one, one way. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, but quickly, I just wanted to point out that, you know, every, every speaker here today, you're free to, you know, interact with, you know, the opinions from the other guests. Um, this is the conversation okay. after all, it's not a one-way street. So just feel free to chip in one or two things if you feel you must. Um, so next question without further ado is for Akinola and Kong. Um, we talk about the technology and how, you know, that is changing everything. I mean, um, Onka can just buttress that slightly, but I mean, how does technology enable change? And how exactly does it enable change for business owners? I thank you for, for uh, that question. Um, one of the things that comes to mind is like, the question just like says like, how is breathing essential for living, right? I mean, we have to breathe to survive. So in today's world, asking how technology is, is needed in business or, I mean, technology is business. Um, one of the things that you would uh, notice is when you're trying to build a business, the question here is, what are you solving, right? Um, you're actually solving a problem and technology is needed to both create a business skill and scale a business. So without technology, I, I actually don't know what you want to do because uh, when you create a business, you create a solution around the problem and create value. So even if it is as complicated as health tech, where, you know, uh, or it's even as serious as being an Instagram vendor, running that business requires technology. So if you're taking orders, if you're trying to make payments, if you're trying to create processes, right? Technology is, is what is needed to actually make that business work. So without technology, there's really no solution you can bring to the table, no value you can create, essentially. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, I mean, it, it, the, the part that, like you said, breathing is so essential for human living. So I can't even imagine that in today's world, anybody would want to, um, you know, establish a business or, or solve a problem without adopting technology. But I mean, see me, technology is ever evolving. Technology is ever changing. New solutions are coming up every day. So how do you suggest that many of these SMEs can survive the ever-evolving world of new technologies? Um, I believe that um, number one, like it's important to have a system in place. Um, as a business owner, I think it's important to number one, be aware of like what's going on in your environment. So if it's, you know, listening to the news, um, depending on where your business or, or what business, what industry your business is in, basically just being in touch with what is happening in that specific industry in terms of in like 
in terms of like, the latest technologies. And um, I think one thing that is important for businesses is for them to be agile and to be flexible because, um, you know, when there's a new product out there that like everybody's like really excited about and it might, obvious, it might improve your business model, I mean, why not go for it? I don't think you necessarily have to be stuck in how you're currently doing. Like, I, I think like as, as we, like, the previous speakers have said, like, there's like new apps are constantly developing. Everybody is you know, creating this new payments method or creating this new app or just, I think we're constantly finding ways to automate um, the way we do things. So I would say um, like my advice um, to SMEs is number one, just be in touch with what is going on in your specific industry. I, I personally, I, I subscribe to like a lot of newsletters just to basically know what's going on there. Um, it could be even from Twitter. Um, I know we see Twitter, just some people see Twitter as this, social media place where people just come and banter, but there's also like a lot of information there and links to like also like information that is really relevant. So following the right people, um, I think is also like a way to be in touch with like the constant evolving of the new technologies that's out there. All right, thank you. Thank you for that answer. Um, so Tim Tokwe, um, you are one person who, you know, has firsthand experience with, you know, both ends of the spectrum. You have adopted, you have a, sorry, excuse me. You have adopted um, your, your experience being in the employment you know, space, and then you've also um, experienced owning or starting up. So, how would you suggest that local business owners can stay motivated to drive change while um, trying to start up their business or scale their business? Okay, um, well, I guess um, for me, and I'll, of course, I'll be talking from a personal perspective. Um, before the pandemic hit, um, I had already made a decision to start moving my things online um, because I run a training school. And I felt it was, I mean, for personal reasons as well as for business reasons, I felt, look, it's important to move these things online um, because I could really wide, you know, reach a wider market. Um, also because of some personal things I was working on. So because of that, in fact, it was almost like a clairvoyant thing because who knew COVID would hit, you know? So I had been online for like three years before COVID hit. And in fact, um, the way I see technology today, I see it beyond business. Um, I'll touch on something Omar said, and it was about, um, you know, the pandemic and how it has affected us and you just have to be online. But I found that what really helped my business, especially during the pandemic, was the fact that I was able to connect with people because one thing a lot of us took for granted was the mental health of people, right? So being able to connect with my students, not being see not seeing that because we had to shut down school and not seeing them for like six months, after six months and I decided, look, you know what, let's meet online. I felt so happy. So that actually, you know, being able to reach people over and beyond business, because after a while, people are like, okay, everything is all about business, all about business. But I've come to realize in the past one year that technology has been able to make us connect with people and even indirectly now grow our businesses in ways that we haven't even thought of. You find people subscribing to some of the things I'm doing, not because they really want to come to the school, but because they like what I'm saying. And um, I, I just started a podcast and the podcast is helping people. How did I start it? I was at home. I wasn't really doing anything, you know. By the time it takes six hours out of Lagos traffic, there's a lot of time to do a lot of things. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what Absolutely. I mean? <laughs> so it's, it's, it actually will make you think more about other things you can do over and above just being in the physical space. So that's how it has yeah. actually helps me. Yeah. Um, honestly, the pandemic just opened up how important technology is for human survival. And I'm so glad you talked about mental health. It, it, I mean, everybody had was going through one thing or the other, but you know, before we get into all that, um, a little bit more, I have a question for, for Omokak. Um, so what, what tips or what tricks do you think that businesses that are just starting out their digital journey can look to adopting? Okay, so the first thing is um, a lot of people think going online because it seems, you know, we say it's easy to just yeah. go online or have a social media presence or whatever. You just jump in. No, I think every business, whether you're a small solopreneur, as it were, or you're even bigger, you need to have a strategy, a digital strategy. So it starts with, first of all, thinking about your brand, your branding. You know, you need to go through, you have a branding strategy. 
Now, people think brand is just, I have a logo, I have this, or, or some people call it packaging. I heard yesterday, it isn't, you know. Uh, branding is to do with who you are, you know, as a business, you know, um, uh, what, you, what, you know, who you are, what you do, what you're promising people, you know, all those things that you, your values, all those things that uniquely make you you. Because if you are not authentic and you want to be, say, for example, the next piggy vest, piggy vest is piggy vest. It just means that you are not authentic to who you are. So you need to have a strong, you need to understand who you are as a brand, you know, no matter how small you are. Uh, because that, as somebody said to me, a company is like, um, it's like being in a relationship. You know, the people that want your brand, as soon as they meet you, they will get you and they will know you because you've defined who you are and they see you, you know. Then you need to also know your customer, you know. Um, again, like the other thing that people will be like, everybody's my customer because I'm online. I can reach a wide audience everywhere in the world. It's not so. You still have your core customers that will get you because they know who you are. You've defined your brand, yeah. So you need to, you need to take some time to uh, do a buyer persona, as it were. Know your customers. Know who the people you are targeting online. Because your customers are not online everywhere. You know, you're going digital. You know, so uh, you need to find that one out as well. And then uh, you need to think about, you know, your messaging. You know, that's your, what kind of messaging. So now I'm talking online. So you, you, you know, there's an element of being online facing people. And obviously there's using tech to automate your processes. So there are two things here, you know, using client-facing stuff, i.e. that people see, which is all this, your online stuff I'm talking about, and obviously using uh, tech. So, so you do all of this, and you also obviously need to think about when you're doing your branding, who you are as a business. Now, you obviously need to think about how do I want to use tech? What kind of technologies do I want to use? You know, uh, do I want a website? Do I want to just be on social media somewhere? Um, what is it I want to do? And do I want to start using cloud-based services to automate? If you, if you have people working in different locations, you know, so you have to think about all of that. Think about what you want to do. That's part of the strategy and planning. And then um, think about your budget. You know, obviously a lot of techie type. If you are using cloud tools, um, some of them they are free versions, paid versions. What do you want to do? You have to think about things like that. Um, think about how much money you want to spend and stuff like that. And obviously. When you have all of that in place, you can start running, you know? And obviously, like we were talking about change, change, change. A lot of things change quickly. So obviously you need to keep, I mean, monitoring, tracking, assessing, changing all the time. And uh, just adapting, you know, to, to the changing world we live in. Yeah, so basically flexibility yes. is key, guys. We were able to accept change, yeah, yeah. And, and if we go back to the COVID thing we were talking about, what, we, what I think a lot of people have found out, but even us as a business, a lot of the businesses that survived and tried to do well during the pandemic are businesses that were tech enabled already, like uh, uh, Temi Tokwe said, you know. Um, yes, during the pandemic, a lot of people then started trying to put in digital structures, digital models and digital, but the ones that actually survived and I'm not saying and flourished obviously we know we know the big four tech Amazon and all those people they were making so much money but even like locally here the businesses that did well small businesses were the ones that were already using tech you know and they didn't have to close shop I have so many clients and customers that they own like you know huge boutiques selling all these the luxury kind of products pandemic came shut down bam everything just stopped you know people turning over billions of naira uh, pandemic came, everybody shot. So the ones that actually used tech and were able to adapt very quickly, you know, were the ones that actually survived. So just throw that one in there. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> so, um, I can, so um, I mean, Omar has basically pointed out a lot of these things. People can't go online to just start a business without being very deliberate about, you know, the processes or how exactly they intend to um, attract their customers, but do you have anything? Because there's so much, so much competition out there. And to be honest, I feel like I, I can't imagine how hard it is for businesses, especially smaller ones, ones that are just starting out. You know, trying to you know compete with with so many established brands online. So, do you have any more um, you know advice for people who want to attract customers online? I think maybe aside from you know understanding their uniqueness or you know all that. Anything that what do you think it takes to attract customers online? 
I think Omo has literally just finished this webinar. I think we can just close our laptops and, <laughs> and go because because I mean she has said everything that everyone needs to know. And some you know some of these things like everybody knows these things, right? It's this is yeah. information that is available at your fingertips, really. But the problem is execution, right? Um, one of the things or oh, or. Oh, how I think about it is, first of all, what value are you bringing? I mean, you want to go online, great, online is online, but what value are you bringing? What problem are you solving? Where is your, where are your customers? Uh, what is the need they have? And then what's the solution you're taking to them, right? Um, I mean, for us, we started, we started tech since 2014, the founding team, you know, building products and all our products went viral, all of them, but only two currently stand, which is Push CV and Piggy Vest. We had food fests that went on for three years, but the company still shut down. We still had, uh, I mean, we're online, we're on different, uh, I, mean, I mean, lists, including business day, but I mean, some of those companies still shut down. So yes, online is great, but the strategy, as almost said, is what will keep you afloat. I'll just cite two examples, obviously, of the companies that are still standing. Um, in 2014, we realized, and all of us, I mean, young, fresh out of uni, looking for jobs, and we, well, we couldn't find the job, so we created it, right? Um, and what we wanted to do was, uh, we knew there were two problems, people accessing jobs, and then the recruiters themselves being overwhelmed with um, finding the right people. So we brought those two together and said, you know what, we're going to get access to, give people access to jobs, and we're going to tell these recruiters, we'll solve your problem for you. Here are pre-screened candidates, just, you know, last stage, any question you want um, or you want to ask them rather than inviting 1,000, 2,000 people, just, you know, let us know and we'll find a way to do it for you and just give you 10 people choose to. So it was very easy. We had this growth hack mechanism that we used and in, in what, in two weeks, we were able to raise, have 1 million people on the on the platform and we raised the highest money we had raised, uh, or, I mean, generated revenue, which was 22 million in seven days. I mean, with seven young chaps, you know, mm -hmm. right? So we brought a solution and just took it to where people were. We did like, a, it was called the employee, elite employee quest. We had millions and millions of people who were, you know, using the technology available at the time, which was social media. And we, at the time too, newspaper had some, sort of standing at the time, still has, still has, but for the kind of people we wanted to reach, we wanted them to have this, you know, everybody was waiting for my name to come out. You know how, how you're waiting for your name to come out on your university list. So we just took that. And then, so the attention we gathered at the time was so massive, we we're on many lists. However, in 2015, I mean, imagine in less than a year, that whole vibe, and then boom, it's almost like, where are we now? And so, ever-changing needs of people. Um, and the next thing we knew, there was a viral tweet of somebody saving 365,000 Naira um, in 2015 at saved 1,000 Naira daily. And we're like, we're here again. What can we do? This is a need. People want to save. They have discipline issues. And uh, so how can we meet this need? And for us, um, in churning out products since 2014, we've always wanted to meet the needs of people. It's very easy because we also have the same needs. I mean, all of us are, you know, less than 30. Well, I'm 30 now. So, well, <laughs> at, the <t> at the time, so we're always trying to solve the needs that, uh, you know, was plaguing us at the time. And so, I mean, Piggy Vest came and the next thing we knew, there were some problems. People did not have a savings culture. People didn't have financial literacy and then people didn't have access to financial services. All right, we've been doing product for a while. Let us build a product around it. Currently at 2021, we're 2 million plus users. Um, and so one of the things that I would say is, I mean, online is great, but one of the things that we have excelled in is executing. We, no one has executed like us, I, I dare say. I mean, Omo, I mean, Omo was saying you can just bring out another Piggy Vest, but I mean, you would just be a clone of Piggy Vest. So yes, there's competition all around the world. And one of the things that we had, especially in this part of the world was the first mover's advantage. We hadn't done financial services. No one had done financial services um, as we did it. And so we were able to, at least in the first, before the next product came out, that was, you know, um, like a competitor, we had what, six months to build our market. And so we just took that solution of, hey, 
everybody wanted to save. Here is the answer, guys. Add your card. We had a fantastic partner with Paystack. And before we knew it, from what, 22, uh, 20, 200, 300 users in 2016 at now 2 million users. What am I trying to say? There are competitors everywhere, but nobody is going to do or solve the problem like you. That is, that is a very important lesson, which leads to my very my next question. And I would love for everyone to um, you know, give their input on this. Is social media advertising overrated? Um, I would, okay, sorry, before we speak to that, I think I, I just want to speak to something Ibukun, um said. Um, so what we're talking about before, not, not specific to what she said. I think another thing that a lot of businesses try to do is to do everything by themselves. Um, before we go into like social media, I think a lot of people, even if, like some people don't understand how some of these things work, but like you sit down and try to figure it out by yourself when you ideally should be focusing like on other parts of your business and trying to make like your business grow. Um, I think sometimes people see hiring people to help you move your business forward as a cost. But if you really utilize these people, I see it as a way of um, making more money for your business and then you're able to pay these people. Um, because like we see a lot of, you know, there's constantly new evolving technologies, um, especially like with data, for example. I don't think a lot of businesses know how to use data to move like to make business decisions. But like if, if you don't understand data or how it works, I hiring someone to help you figure all that out and just taking a look at your all the information that you have collected and help you make business decisions, um, I think is actually also very important just to stay in touch with um, what's going on in your industry. I just wanted to add that before we then move on to you. So you know, definitely social media is definitely not overrated. Uh, maybe I should just speak to that since I'm already speaking. Um, I have also, Actually, I run, I'm constantly running a business, let me be honest. And let's say I have run businesses in the past. I've actually met um, Tim Tepe once, a very long time ago, because I used to work in fashion. Um, she might not remember me, but I met her a very long time ago. And she was talking about, um, I think it was about, it was at an event, it was a fashion event somewhere in Suru Larry. And um, I don't know, we all gathered together. And then I, she came to basically talk about um, our school, um, like school of fashion and all of that. I think I always follow my business. Someone has, someone has a fan, someone has a fan, someone has a fan. Cool. I see many ways through social media has helped like my businesses. Um, I'm constantly doing new things. So I don't want to say one or the other, um, but especially for like, let's say for fashion, if I'm doing like a promo or something, um, thanks to Instagram, like there's the creating promotional, what's that thing? Promotions basically you can create promotions. And I've seen like, a look, I've gotten like a lot of new customers just through that, um, through that function, um, whereby like people that have never had the chance to interact with my page before then are suddenly discovering my page. And then they're saying, oh, do you do this? Even though what you're promoting is not exactly what they want, you can then like, Push other, you can tell them, oh, if you don't want that, there's something else I can do for you. So I definitely think um, social media is not overrated. That's helped my brand, that's helped my business in so many ways. It helps, it has helped me connect to people that I ideally would never have the chance to meet um, one on one. So yeah, that's what I have to say to that. Okay. Um, could you think? Do you think social media is overrated? Um, is that for me? Oh. Yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Well, um, is it overrated? Definitely not. But I see social media from two angles. There's the advertising arm of social media and there's the normal Instagram where we just rant and, you know, I use social media to distress. I'm always ranting on social media about one thing or the other. And then there's now the business page and my personal page where I, you know, show people, you know, um, aspects of my life. So for me, it's like a way of just ranting and distressing, you know. Um, so, and I find that I get a connection when people see other aspects of my life over and above business. So that is the kind of connection that I have with people that I'm able to leverage on with social media. Um, then there's the advertising aspect as well. I mean, we all, we've all heard of adverts on, um, on Facebook and stuff like that. And I used to think it was a waste of time until I did a Facebook ads course last year. And then I launched a book I wrote in one week. And I kid you not, like joke, if I tell you how many people have seen that book, how many people, how many countries have been able to actually sell that book to, you know, things I had never really thought about. If I hadn't done that Facebook advert, you know, of course, normally you can try to grow organically, 
which is, you know, the social media, you know, ranting and talking about your business and stuff like that, then you can actually now leverage social media from the advertising aspect, which is something that if one knows how to do, I mean, I can't say I'm a Facebook guru or I'm an Instagram guru or something, but um, I do see the benefits of both sides. And um, it has really helped me in my business because now I can see things clearly. And in terms of um, what someone said, in terms of outsourcing, I do have a social media person who I've never seen her before in my life. I don't even know what she looks like. <laughs> I know her, I know her picture. I know what, you know, I've seen her in a picture, but I've only spoken to her in maybe 10 times in like the last two years I've been working with her. Do you understand? So what she does is because, the, you know, there's sometimes if I get messages saying, oh, I haven't heard from you in a while. I, sometimes when you're talking on social media, you don't even know people are watching you or people are listening or waiting for something you put out. So sometimes I get a message in my inbox saying, I haven't heard from you. You know, I'm always following you. And after a while, I realized that I could not cope because, I mean, today there's Twitter, tomorrow there's LinkedIn, the next tomorrow there's, you know, now there's Clubhouse and everything. So I had to get someone and tell, tell the person, look, when I'm busy, just two days, two times a day, just post something, you know, so that you keep people, you know, engaged. And th that to me has been the huge benefit of having a social media presence, because that way people think I'm alive. People think the page is alive. People are buzzing me, asking me, oh, can I produce for them? Can I do this for them? Can I do that for them? And I'm happy because I've seen the benefit. So is it overrated? No. If any, but I think a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that all you have to do is post on Instagram and then the business will come. That is a huge, yeah. huge mistake. Instagram is for people to know you exist, but if you really want to make business, you can decide to wait, grow organically, and wait for the next three years to be organically, you know, um, to have a lot of um, followers, or you can decide to leverage the other arm, which is advertising. So yeah. that's what I have to say about I social media. I agree. Does anyone else have anything to add about that? Yes. Yes, let, let, me talk, let me speak about that. Social media is not overrated at all. Um, I'll give you some stats. Worldwide, so social media is huge. There are so many social media platforms. And you know, I was talking about um, your customers are not everywhere. Your customers are not on every single social media platform. Yeah. Facebook on its own has over 2 billion uh, users worldwide. Is the biggest, well, I mean, 2 billion people. That's the massive market. In, in, in worldwide, it's the biggest. Um, um, Instagram, all of these, all that stuff, billions of users worldwide. In Nigeria, WhatsApp is the biggest, you know, <laughs> followed by Facebook. Yeah. These, are, these are huge, these are huge markets, huge audiences. And they are used for business. So there's use of social media for, for personal relationship uh, building. It's also for business uh, relationship building. That's why you have Facebook for business, Twitter for business, Instagram for business. Instagram is you know, showing things visually. So when you do your customer profile, you will know where your customers are online. They are not on every single social media platform. They are in specific places. And what Tammy Topper talked about, sharing a part of your life, that's actually a content strategy for you. You know what I mean? Going and people like, because people like to see real, you know, so they like you to share an aspect of your life. And it doesn't mean I'm trying to do it today, you know? It, they just want, it could be like, oh, this is the way I'm doing my work. Look at me. Oh my gosh. You know, uh, Zoom, whatever. People like to see all of that. So social media is huge and it's still going to be huge. So as a business, you need to leverage, you need, you know, it goes back to strategy, as I say, you, you need to make sure that the platform you're using fits in with your goals as a business. Yeah. Um, it can't be like everybody's dancing on Instagram. Let me go and dance. But that might not be your business thing. And your customers might not want that. And you might just lose customers because you go and do something that is out of your uh, who you are, you know. Uh, so you need to know that. It needs to also, you also need to make sure you're on the platform that is where you can express your content. You know, your content needs to be solving the pain. You know, I think you can spoke um, a lot about that. It needs to be solving the pain of your customers. So when customers go online, whether it's you via your website or social media, it's because they want a problem solved, or sometimes they just want to be entertained, you know? So you need to know what you're doing. Your content strategy will really speak to different aspects, you know? On social media, it's not really advisable to be hard, hard, hard selling. You know, you need to provide educational content. You need to entertain them sometimes. Sometimes you need to show them a piece of your life, you know? But you need to, so a good strategist, you know, so be weary of all these uh, uh, content developers. A good content strategist will make sure you have the right content mix and you, you also you're on the right platforms and you know what you're showing your customers. So social media, definitely not overrated. 
definitely still required, very required if you are in business, no matter how small you are. If you don't have a social media presence, please go and find where you fit and, and try and do something and post regularly. Even if you have to get a consultant or outside help to help you, do it. So that's my two pennies to that. Um, that's, um, question. Yeah, I would <laughs> like to add to what um, Omar said, and I just pick banking of that. I mean, everybody has said that social media, I mean, I will be lying to myself and to all of the all of the businesses that we've been able to run if I said it was overrated. Like social media is where we built our businesses. For example, Piggy Vest was born on social media. Or, I mean, Piggy Bank, the NGO at the time was, I mean, Piggy Bank. And we just took the name that everybody related to at the time, which was Piggy Bank. Everybody knew what Ecolo was, right? Um, and for all of our businesses, when people needed food and were hungry and wanted to do like food festivals, we were there to answer those questions. When people needed jobs, we were there. When people, I mean, all of the businesses, we, I remember us having um, like a freelance business. I mean, and it was a time where the conversation was, I mean, I want to do something and I want to, I mean, back in the day when working from home wasn't really yet really solid, but there was the conversation around that we've done people connecting, I mean, food from cooks. I mean, we've done a lot. I mean, from cooks to people delivering and at home, right? But one of the things that we have excelled at, which I mean, closely tied to what Timothy Topper said is, and also what Omar said is the strategy behind it. Yes, we built our business on social media, but we're able to strategize using what, I mean, for us at Piggyverse, we had a referral system that we pushed through the um, through social media. So, I mean, everyone was talking about them. I remember our first withdrawal day in 2016. I mean, everybody had saved for a particular number of days and we, we, you know, they wanted to withdraw. And with our partner Space Stack, we're able to make everything very seamless, very, very seamless. So someone is like, I saved for 90 days and I have my money now. Right, and so when we saw that conversation building, what we wanted to do was grow organically through that. So it was word of mouth. And when we built a referral system that rewarded people um, to, I mean, once you share your referral link, you have and some bonuses when you join and the person that referred you, and right. So we've been largely able to grow to a customer base currently off social media. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't see a piggy vest billboard or anything outside. Right, but we've done all of all of all of our ma marketing has been on social media. Then we, you know, do financial literacy, uh, maybe some clubhouse rooms. Um, we've also done events that stand out of conversation. And I remember early, early, early on, we would be doing tweets um, around content that was that was trending. So I remember there was a time of, there was a food conversation, you know, about saving or you know eating your last meal with your last money and then we put out tweets like this there's rice at home right and so i mean the engagement of tweets like that was able to grow our customer base so yes social media is not overrated at all How, however just like the other speakers have said the strategy behind that because you can post content and not have anything yeah um just to add to that um so yeah based up to we're very big on social media um and i think it's also another way for us as a company to like, get feedback from our users so uh, many times like when we either release a new product like you see a lot of people like engaging to say oh like i really like this or if people have issues with it many people just like if you're familiar with twitter you know people just say like anything that's on their in their head right so just like oh no this thing is crappy i mean we don't have that but it's just to show that like in terms of like feedback it's also like another way for us as a business to get feedback and even in terms of like customer support that's also become another channel so it's not by people going to the conventional go to the website and send an email to support or send a message people actually also send dms or even respond on that like tweets to say i have this problem you guys haven't responded to me and then someone in the support team is able to jump in and say oh what's the problem and how, and how can we help you so um i think that's like another thing i wanted to add to that uh, for so for a business like us that is very sensitive with money people don't even go to like the uh, email i've not received my money i have not i mean so you see yeah, you see tweets on that i mean i mean you see maybe there's a tweet where there is a pay stack or and a piggy vest in a tweet. You know, there is a company tweet, and people will just go to that particular tweet and rant on that. So, I mean, there is customer feedback, there is customer support, there is everything like you would. And for piggy vest, we are very paranoid when it comes to what is out on Twitter. Like, 
And I, I mean, the role I'm even heading, like once there is something up with Twitter and money like this, everybody's messaging me, IDK, IDK, IDK. And I mean, they, they know me at Paystack, like I don't allow them rest, right? So you build, I mean, especially in this 21st century that we are, your business is and lives on social media. We can't, we can't we, hear we you. We can't hear you. I hear you, sister. How about now? Is this, this is good? Good, but I can't. Yeah, hear, I can I can't... hear you. You can hear you now. Okay, good. Okay, good. So, um, I just wanted to say that you know, they, all businesses that are present here today should listen to you guys. That leveraging social media advertising and social media as a whole is not out of style, and it does not look like it's going out of style anytime soon. Um, but I just and also, guys, if you have any questions, please be, feel free to put it in the chat box, and they'll pass it on to me immediately. So we can attend to that as we go along. But um, now we've, we've, we've established that technology is important and social media is important and leveraging all of this um, new technologies is essential for business growth. But you know, adopting technology comes with its fair share of issues. And, and one of those issues is um, cyber security, cyber attacks. So um, I think Simi can answer this. And if anyone else wants to, they can. How can businesses protect themselves and their customers from cyber attacks? Um, all right, thank you um, for the question. So there are so many ways um, businesses can protect themselves. And I think let's even start from like the basics, um, passwords, right? To like your social media, to your website, because as a web, when you have a website, there's like the back end part where you're basically managing like all of that information. Um, so I'm talking about online now, not like offline security, right? Um, so number one, in terms of like generating password, you'd be surprised the number of people that actually use ABCD123 as yeah, their password, one, two, right? And right now, um, I think the reason why people use passwords that they remember is because it's, it's just like, there's like the overload of, I don't want to use too many passwords, so I don't know. So I, if I'm unable to log into um, a specific um, application or something, it's gonna be a problem. Um, but I mean, right now, thankfully, as technology is evolving, we like people have also created password managers whereby you can basically store like each password for any of the applications that I personally use. In fact, I don't even know most of my passwords. It's just like, when I need to log in, I just use, I like, for example, I use LastPass, right? So I just use my LastPass, I get my password and I'm able to log in. So it's number one, being able, generating um, really strong passwords that are able to, um, that to ensure that like, like less people are able to guess what your passwords are like. And another thing that more businesses are trying to take on now is um, the 2FA, so the multi-factor authenticator, right? Personally for all my Instagram accounts, for almost everything I have, there's two FA on it. I have like the OT app on my phone. So if I need to log in, after I've been putting my password, I have to go to my OT app and then, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, and then get the code that before I can log in. So that means for you to hack me, you have to <laughs> you have to come prepared, right? So I think um, that's the, that's like I would say the very like the first simple thing that um, businesses can do. The second thing I would say is for them to um, also like get an expert to basically do a security assessment. So if your business is really focused like on online, for example, you can be a payments company and not have a security um, team or somebody who is really assessing. Um, how secure your business is. Because in the situations whereby you're number one, maybe storing people's cards or you're storing some form of like very important information, it's very important to see, it's very important to ensure that your website is, um, hackers can basically hack into your website. Now this doesn't have anything to do with passwords. There are people that literally are out there like on the dark web, basically that are able to hack into through, through your website just by, for example, if you go to a website and you right click and you do inspect, you'll be surprised the amount of information people can actually get from just inspecting the front end of a specific um, website. So I think it's very important because, um, yeah, Paystack, I mean, we're a payments company, so we are, we are PCI DSS compliant, which is like the highest level of security. We have like multiple security people on our team that are ensuring that like information is protected because 
I believe um, as a business, it's your job to ensure that the, the, the information your customers are entrusting you with, um, they are kept and like people can easily access them. And, and even as we are, we are, even as compliant as we are, like we still have issues whereby some people try to like attack us or people even do like phishing. So I think it's very important to also be familiar with all the different types of ways um, um, people try to hack into a, a company system. So it could be through phishing mail. So that's somebody sending you an email post as somebody from your company to say, hi, Simi, click this link to provide your information. Um, so prior to working at Facebook, I used to work at a bank, right? And they used to do like this, um, this um, sessions whereby everybody in the company, they, they wouldn't tell us. So you just, <laughs> you just get an email that will tell you, Oh, Simi, you need to log into this. And me, they got me the first time, <laughs> right? And then anybody that puts in their information, you must take an information security course and you must pass it. So, uh, so because of that, I became even more aware of like what some of these things are. So if, if someone sends me an email and I'm not really sure and, or, there's a, or there's a link, I would reach out to the person to say, oh, did you send me this email? Like just to verify that it's from that person. So I don't also put myself and my company at risk. So there's hacking, there's phishing, there's social engineering, whereby it could be somebody around you. So I know people, like we do this thing whereby, yes, you're working for a company, you trust the people around you, or even as a business, you're saying you trust people, but you can't be too careful, right? So just in terms of like the information you divulge, I mean, for example, I work as a, at the payment company and Ibukun is very familiar with this. As close as Ibukun and I, okay, we're friends, outside of this right i would not give us certain information like even sometimes if we are talking about like another business if another pistak business i wouldn't give her information because it's just like we understand that this is how it is like i'm not going to give you information about this other business right um so i think it's just very important and i think as a business it's also important to train like members of the team on what some of this um what some of these threats might be to the business. So it's either like getting an information security expert to come in and take you through like a day course and like take, take people now it is. There are like lots of information security courses out there where you can just like send to your team and get everybody to take those courses. Um, I, I think there's so much and I think it's constantly evolving because the way we say technology is evolving is the way this fraud starts and these hackers too are also evolving and they're becoming even more sophisticated, right? Um, so I think, um, it's just important if a company can afford it and if you're really technology centric to get someone on the team who is really focused on securing the business or even you can get as a consultant if you can keep the person as a team just to run checks on your business once in a while to see what's going on there and to check for vulnerability and to ensure that you're not at risk of hacking in the future. It's expensive though, but it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think Simi has said everything. Person. Sorry, I, I would just yeah. like to add something. Simi has said everything I think there is to, to know, but one of the major things that you need to do is literacy and not just to your team as a business, but to your customers. So because yes, you can be very secure in your team, you have the experts. I mean, it's, and I'm talking from experience with the kind of uh, uh, business we run, we deal with p uh, money, basically money, right? So we were secure bank level security, expects coming in all the time. We even run bounty programs where, you know, for the for those people that want to try and then you say, oh, help us look. And if you are able to get, you, you get X amount of dollars or we have, you know, we do all of that. But one of the things that we're very focused now is our users because they are the ones that lose out most if we are secure, but they aren't, right? And I mean, it's a tiny, it's a tiny thread, but it's the, one of the most important parts, right? Because if they click on a phishing link, they are the ones that their account is compromised. And we have, um, I mean, various uh, security levels, but if these guys have been able to understand what it is, right? They can, they can create them. I, I just don't want to you know, say things like how they are, Right, but we, we especially me, we've had to deal with um, making sure that our users are aware. So yes, your team member that's in the company shouldn't click a phishing link, but your customers too shouldn't click a phishing link because at the end of the day, the loss is majorly on you. Right, you might have the lingua to, to, to for them and say, oh yes, it's your fault, it's your whatever. But by the time they go to social media and just print out, I mean, they talk about it in one funny context, and the next thing, your business has to deal with PR issues, right? So one of the major keys is education. I mean, for cyber attacks, your team should know and your users should know. 
Mm. Right, right. So uh, basically, it's very important that business owners understand the responsibility that comes with adopting technology for every aspect of business, just like it is with, you know, every other business process and trying to improve that. So you have to be deliberate about, you know, every single step you take towards transitioning into the digital space. Um, but very quickly, um, Mr. Mitakwe, I mean, um, what's her name? Simi, Simi just said, talked about how expensive it is, it is to adopt some of these um, processes. But, and sometimes it's not easy to, to, to hire help or hire, you know, people to, to, to help you with some of these decisions or some of these this functionalities. But what, what, what are the key skills, in your opinion, um, that a lot of these early stage business owners need to have to be able to at least, you know, start up or at least start earning some level, some a good level of revenue. Um, leveraging on um, tech, right? Well, for me, maybe it's it. Sometimes it's a bit difficult for me to. Um, identify with the challenges other business owners have. And I'll tell you why. Because I do a lot of research and I have a lot of pain points. And for me, Google is my number one. <laughs> so the number one skill you should have as a business owner is to just Google. Google knows Google. <laughs> That's your number one thing. Because all the questions that you have, all the challenges that you have, I have faced issues with technology, like so many issues. I mean, I've had so many people that have tried to, you know, I've tried to engage on my website that I ran away with my money. I eventually learned to build my website myself. Do you understand? So, but how did I find, of course, there, sometimes I did courses, but a lot of the times I leverage Google a lot. When it comes to security, I am completely clueless on security. So what do I do? I use Fiverr. I just get on Fiverr, get someone to go and fix my backend, pay him like next to nothing and get it done. And my life is so simple. But the truth is, what I would tell business owners like myself who, who are trying to just make things work because I am not IT. Well, in comparison to others, people would say maybe I have a bit of, you know, IT, you know, knowledge, but I'm not a tech person. You understand? The only reason I'm really into tech is because I had to solve my problems and I started leveraging on these things. Every single thing I've done in tech has been to help me solve a problem, right? So the question now becomes, just start doing research because when you want to start a business and I've been making this kind of noise for like the past two weeks about being able to be found on Google people. I mean, after, you know, this year started, a lot of businesses are coming out. People are complaining, reaching out to me. How do I make sales? How do I make sales? How do I make sales? People have read the book and they're like, Oh, you spoke about, you know, people finding you from all over because we produce. Right. So how do people find you? I'm like, get on, you need to create a digital presence for yourself and not just social media. You know, you need to figure out how to, you know, use a website or how to create a website or use Google My Business or, you know, these, those, these are things I'm concerned. In fact, I am making noise about it at the moment. If you don't have a digital presence in this day and age, you cannot really afford to put an advert out in the paper. So how else are you going to do it? The easiest way you can do that is through digital media, right? Create a website know the language you're using on your website, get your website optimized. Sometimes when I talk about optimized website, people are like so clueless. I'm like, well, because I do a lot of research, then I know what an optimized website is. You understand? So I think it begins for um, business owners need to realize that that phone you have is an encyclopedia, right? Get on Google. It is free. That is like the biggest, freest university you can ever have. Do a lot of research because there's no way you can run a business and not do research. Right. And then whatever you cannot find on the Internet, try and invest in the knowledge, because a lot of people are used to looking for freebies. I love freebies. YouTube is my thing. However, instead of trying to figure things out in two years, I'd rather pay someone to tell me how to do it in one week. You understand? So I find out that a lot of times small business owners like myself, you know, are too busy chasing the pennies and losing the pounds, you know. Um, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to go out of your way to spend so much money. Nobody has money. That's the truth. We don't have that. We are not like a pay stack or like, you know, a piggy vest. We don't have the money. You understand? But the truth is, if you don't spend money, you will not make money. And rather than just sitting in a place and looking at other people and saying, you know, um, I'm trying to figure out, just try and figure out what they're doing. Try and do research because research is freely available on the internet. That is what I keep telling business owners. And you need to have a website. It is not just enough to have an Instagram page 
or to have you know a google page because a lot of times and i i, I this is the comparison i have between social media and digital media i read this ever since i read this book everybody lies it's almost like wow this guy is telling me exactly what I've been saying for so long that I've, I've had in my head, but I've never really understood it. You know, most times, of course, until I did a digital media course and digital marketing course, most times when, when you are on social media and you're posting, you are invading people's privacies. If you're on Google, people are looking for your service. So chances are when they, like, for example, if I, if you type fashion school in Lagos, my name will pop up because I'm on Google and because you're already meeting a need, you're meeting me, I'm meeting you in the middle of the funnel, which is the sales funnel. You understand? So it is impossible for me, in my opinion, for you to want people to find you and just leverage or just live on Facebook or on Instagram. It's a blend between the two, right? So what I'll tell business owners is first things first, if you want people to find you wherever you are, based on my experience, get a house or a home on the internet. It doesn't have to be a paid website. It can be a free website. You can use Wix. You can use WordPress. I, I for years before I used matwin.com, I was using Blogger as my website, you know, and I was blogging. And most times, I mean, one of my biggest articles has been the difference between a fashion designer and a tailor. Till tomorrow, that is my number one article. And that is how people find me. And that's how people make inquiries. Because, and how did I write that article? It was just a question someone asked me one day. And I thought, how come people don't know this? And I wrote a blog post on it and that was it. You know, so business owners, please, whatever you do, just get a presence on the website. It is going to save you. Now for my factory, I don't even market again. I have a lot of orders that I keep passing on to people because I can't hold on to it. And how do they find me? From the internet. They just Google clothing factory in Lagos. My name pops up, you know? So that is what they need to do. Yeah, to be honest, I personally, if I want to buy something, I just Google. <laughs> Exactly. Right. Exactly. Public Instagram accounts can be quite tiring, and I just need a website. Yeah. I yeah. Um, but speaking of websites, though, we have uh, an expert present here with us. So, um, Omar Clark, um, how can SMEs? I mean, you know, we are all novices, but how can SMEs determine if their websites satisfy technical requirements in today's market? Okay. I'll talk about that, but first I want to talk, I want to like just touch on some of the stuff that, um, is it Top Topper was talking about? Yeah, yeah Topper. So Topper talked about a lot of digital marketing techniques, but you're not talking about it as if it's a digital, I'm a tech expert, so come and ask me anything, <laughs> I will talk to you. So writing the article is actually content marketing, that's marketing your expertise, you know what I mean? And you, you touched on SEO, so I'm going to talk about that as well, you know? So what's a, a website? First of all, all the information you're looking for is the website. So these days, I hope you can. Ooh, I think there's a connection issue. Um, the problem with technology. Okay. Um, there's so everybody for Amakak, can you can you can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can hear much you. better. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Oh my gosh. We can hear you now. Um, it's it's breaking. Maybe you make it, can you change location of your internet or something? Um, what did you lose me? I don't know what I was talking. Uh, okay, I think we've lost her. I think we've lost her. Okay, you know what? Um, I think we should take a break. Um, we have a video from Netplus that we want you to watch. So maybe the host can just quickly play that before she comes back. Oh, hear me? Hello?
Okay, so that's that's yeah. a new a new launch from Netplus. Um, you all can check it out on netplus.com.ng if you have any inquiries or questions. So, but I'm okay. I'm, have you I've been able to fix your internet now. I hope. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we can. Fantastic. Okay, sorry, I had to reconnect with um, my phone. We understand. We're in Nigeria. It happens to everybody. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Um, I don't know where I stopped, but I'll just start. So I'm like, I was talking about a lot of the stuff that uh, Topper was talking about here. And you were talking about a lot of digital marketing techniques, like writing the article about difference between this and that. That shows your expertise. So that's content marketing. So even doing Google ads, it's also a, a content marketing technique as well. So like um, Simi said as well, when these days, when people are looking for stuff straight, they go onto the internet, yeah? to try and find uh, whatever they are looking for. That's their intention. Um, you guys touched on SEO. So search is the way. Google is not the only search engine, but it's one of them. So if your website is, if your website is not being found or if there are technical issues with your website, I think one of the first things we do is we carry out what we call a digital audit, yeah? A digital audit really is to um, look, it's a forensic audit, if I call it that, of your website. If you guys account, if there's any account that you know what a forensic audit is, is to check your website's content for quality content from what the user can see, user facing, um, for what the user can see, so that uh, it's, to, it's to check quality content that is expert, it's authentic, it's trustworthy, is to check the keywords. The keywords are the things that you are typing into your website. So for example, I'm looking for um, uh, 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 for a tailor in Lagos, for example. That's the user intent, you know. So you can optimize, you can sort of like optimize your content to that. So we search for that in a digital audit. We check uh, the layout of your website, which is the architecture, user interface, user experience, to make sure that everything is working as it should. Uh, we check the technical backend as well, your coding, the kind of coding the infrastructure you use. And then there are other things that are important as well, like, I think you were talking about security, you know what I mean? Are you using an SSL certificate, you know what I mean, for security to prevent malicious access or, and also to build trust? Cause like, you know, you are, if you are PDE vest or you are a uh, pay stack, somebody is coming to use your platform. They want to know that it's secure and somebody won't go and steal their money, you know? So we need to make sure that you're doing all of that. We check that. We need to check that um, you are even connected to something like Google Analytics, you know what I mean? So you can track. So all of this we do, you know, and then we see what the issues are with your website. The issues can be content wise, i.e. people cannot be fine because I'll give you an example. I remember once we had a lady that, you know, she's a fancy, beautiful e-commerce website, but obviously no traction, nobody's using it. What do you do? She says she does Afrocentric clothes. Even, you know what I mean, for, for a lot of people are like, okay, are you going on the website internet to say, I'm looking for Afrocentric clothes? No, you know what I mean? But anyway, basically long and short, she does Ankara. So basically if she had, if our website had reflected, I'm doing Ankara, it's easy. For me, Afrocentric means something totally different to most Nigerians I've spoken to, you know, cause I used to live uh, abroad. And when you say Afrocentric, it's different things I'm thinking about. I'm not even thinking of fabric at all in any way, form or fashion. But I'm a client, but she will never get me because if I go in Google, I'm not typing, I am looking for Afrocentric, you know, I'll be looking for Ankara. So that's the user intent and that's the keyword, you know, so all of that uh, has to be done. That's optimizing. So when we see the pain points of your website, is it content? Is it your lay? Is it like your, your e-commerce? Your website is so difficult to find the product or even the payment gateway is like just terrible. You know what I mean? Nobody will want before somebody even gets to the point where they have to buy from you, they drop off, you know. Is it that? So, so we look at, so these are some of the things. Or is it just to do with like the way it was coded? It was, it's just like bad coding everywhere, you know? So when we, a digital audit will give us a sense of exactly where the problem is with your website, then we can go and fix it. So the problem of fixing it is what we call optimization. <laughs> That's search engine. It's optimizing it so that search engine crawlers, I hope I'm not, I'm trying not to be technical, so that search engine crawlers can actually find your website online. Yeah, then you can be appearing in the first page of search engine results when somebody goes and type in uh, a search query that relates to content that is on your website. There are billions of websites on the internet, many doing the same thing as you're doing. So how do you differentiate yourself? And we'll go back to the branding I was talking about. So you have to have something uniquely. Am I, are you doing Adre? So it has to show that because people are going to look for Adre, not just clots. 
you know, if you are just cloth, then somebody, so, so these are the things then, you know, when we do an audit, we find out, is it to do with the content that you have not just content? And then also your social media. Social media is also important as well because the content you are using on there has to also reflect the user intent, what you are looking for, you know what I mean? Because it's not just like, yeah, you rant, you know what I mean? Why are you ranting online, you know? Uh, uh, what is the problem? Custom, uh, social media is big for customer service. That's why if you have a problem and you know you put it on Twitter, ah, you haven't paid me my money, or everybody jumps on it. So you have to make sure you pay that person their money quickly. Otherwise your reputation is at stake there. You know, <laughs> you start losing business. Even if the person is wrong, you know, they can just destroy it. So, so these are the things we fix and, and then we try to help you. You have to come up with like a proper content strategy. Use um, for, for customer uh, content that the customer can see, it has to be expert, authentic, trustworthy, um, and you have to use the right keywords that describe what your business, your brand is doing. Is that the problem? We'll fix it. Is it to do with your UI, UX, user interface, user experience? User experience to do with the user journey? How difficult, how easy is it to find something or how difficult? You know what I mean? You need to also solve all of it. You know, if that's the problem, we'll fix it. Or is it to do with the technical things that are going on behind the scenes that your customer doesn't know? Even you, you don't even care about if you are TV talking because <laughs> you say you're not techie, you know? But Google cares about, or rather search engines care, uh, care about. So we'll find all those things out and then we'll sort them out. That's search engine optimization. So that's what we do. You have a if you there's no point in having a business if there's no return on investment, ROI. Okay. You know, there's no point. Even if you are building it for free, the, the time you are using to research, build that website for free, you know, and please don't build free website. Come to an expert like us. We'll do something fantastic for you. But, <laughs> you know, the time you are using to do all of that, that's money. Time is money, you know. So you don't want to go and waste your time. Then you have something and nobody's buying from you. So you need to we'll do a digital audit. Find out from a technical perspective what's going on behind the scenes. We'll fix it. And then you start implementing the right digital marketing strategy because not all strategies are good for you, you know. Social media might not just be your thing. Your customers might not be there. Your customers, uh, your customers might be on email. Email marketing might be for you. Or it might be just content marketing, which is expert ma marketing your expertise. is selling without selling. So you're writing articles on LinkedIn, on blogs, or whatever you're doing. That might be the thing you need. You know what I mean? Or your customers just want that. That way, that way it's not hard selling. And the thing about pushing in front of the call, you know, if you're a marketer, I'm a techie person, but I'm talking marketing, the push and pull, you know. So SEO is growing organically, yeah, when we optimize the website from a search engine's perspective so that you're appearing on the first page. But when you do SEM, i.e. things like pay-per-click, you know, where it's like Google ad, where you have to pay some money, for example. So if you, if Pikivest decides today that, oh, we want to launch a new product and we want this thing to blow in like the shortest amount of time, then you spend some money, you know what I mean? And you go to Google ads because the pay per click or you pay per impression or all, all the many things that you can do. That might be the one you decide to use, you know what I mean? Or you can decide to use an influencer, go and get um, uh, Mr. Macaroni, you know what I mean? To do a video about your business and then you put it out there. He puts it out there, you put it out there. People are like, okay, this influencer. I know. So there are different marketing techniques you use, but you know, talk to somebody that knows then we'll, talk through the various strategies and things that are available to you. And then, you know what I mean? We'll do something and you start uh, seeing some returns on your investment. You know, I'm open to questions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, I don't want to be too techy. So yeah, 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 we get it. We get it. We get it. Um, you've covered a lot of the question that, you know, surround website development and management and optimization. But very quickly, our time is actually really fast spent. I want everyone to just, you know, chip in one or two things on the challenges that business owners can expect from adopting technology. And if you have, you know, you know, solutions to counter those challenges, tech tools, I you think business businesses can, can adopt, adopt to supercharge their business, that would be great. But let's do this very quickly so we can wrap up and we can get back to their days. Can I just say something quickly? Um, yeah. um, um, it may not be directly related to what you have just said, but I know a lot of us, I mean, this whole conversation has centered around, you know, um, online, finding, getting found online and everything. But um, for business owners like myself and people listening to this, one thing I would say is try as much as possible to automate your processes. Almost said something about time. Time is one of the biggest things. There was something I, um, I learned from Wazir Warren Buffett. Time is the only thing you cannot buy back. He yeah. said, as rich as he is, he cannot buy time back. So 
technology comes from two angles. It's not just about being seen on social media, but also automating some of your processes so that you can save time. And it might be expensive, but it would be worth it in the long run. I'll give you an example, just a quick example. There's this whole, sometimes when I talk on social media, there's always this whole thing about, oh, people who go to fashion schools are looking down on people that do freehand. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. It's not about pattern making because of the competence. It's not because you're good in pattern making. It's because if I'm sitting wherever I am in the world, I can tell a pattern maker to send me a digital pattern by email, and then I'll just print it on my plotter. That is going to save me the time. It's going to spend, you know, as against, you know, having to, I mean, I'm yet to see anybody send me a cost piece of fabric by email. If you know what I mean. So mm -hmm. if you keep, you know, sticking to the old methods or the old ways, you might actually think, oh, you're saving money. You know, this is how you've learned how to do it. But technology has gone way ahead than what you're thinking about. I mean, I can tell how many yards I can use just by using a digital pattern. You know, I know how many years needs to be bought in the market. There's no trial and error. So as a small business owner, regardless of whatever industry you find yourself in, maybe if you're baking, if you're making perfumes, if you're doing makeup or stuff like that, Find out how you can use technology in your actual business processes to save time and increase your revenue, right? Because time is really what everybody is selling, to be honest. If I want to bill you for a dress, it's how much time it's going to take me to make that dress, you know? So that, that's one aspect that I feel we haven't touched on and I think is really huge, you know, um, in terms of technology for small business owners. Very important lesson. Yeah, I think you. Yeah. I think I want to pick the bank of what Demi Topper said and, um, and also answering your question, focus, uh, what I want to focus is on, we can do great things, we can save time, have great websites, have great products, but well, how do people pay, right? Payment is one of the key things every business person must, must, must focus on because that is where you get value right um you can have the best product in the world but nobody can buy it and so we have I, I'm, I'm i'm very sure i'm probably stomping on simi's point right now <laughs> because she works in a payment company but i mean from all i mean experience in building products um you can have a great business model you can have great a, a, like great team members blah 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 but your revenue the way you collect your money is the most important, one of the most important parts. So automate your payment process. Try and make sure it is less of a burden on the user, right? So make your payment process as, as seamless as possible to connect with people. I mean, us, we use various payment processors. We use Paystack for the way. Uh, we use uh, team apps for you know, different uh, modes of collecting uh, of collecting payments for us so I, I think as as a small business owner make sure that when it gets to the point of payment your 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 you your your customer whether they are abroad or in Nigeria here make sure you connect with payment processors that have the opportunity to collect money from anybody around the world so your business is not just local right so you are locally made you locally processed but then your payments, your payment can be from anybody around the world and you can serve the world from wherever you are. Just let another person go. Yeah, just to speak to that, um, I think um, a lot a lot of misconception businesses have is that for them to be able to receive payments online, they necessarily need to have a website. And that's like one of things like Paystack um, has fixed, where basically you don't necessarily even have to have a website. We have a lot of um, people who sell on social media, who are able to receive payments without even interacting with the customers just directly from their website. Well, sorry, just <laughs> like just directly from their um, Instagram like um, page, right? So you can basically create like a product page <clears throat> and people can click on it, look at your product, they'll see how much it costs and then they can make payments. So just by creating like a Paystack account and submitting your documents, you go live, you can basically do all the information, all the necessary things you need to do back end, and basically just put a link there and people can click on it and, they, and your customers are able to make payments. So if you don't have the money to like buy, um, to you know pay for a domain or get someone to help you build your website, you're not technically savvy, just on your Instagram, simply putting like a product link or a payment page, you're able to um, sell to your customers. Um, so that's that's one thing I will also want people to be aware of. And I think one thing I also noticed, right, just by interacting with some of the vendors is that um, sometimes I want to buy things from vendors and 
I basically always have to ask like for receipts, right? So it's just like, there are tools out there that people can use. Um, even place that we have an invoicing app where basically you can um, create invoices and send to your customers. And, but personally, I think even outside of pay, like pay tax. So let's say you don't necessarily want to like integrate directly to anybody. Um, I know there's this app called Way where people can, you can basically, it's free and you can generate um, receipts to your customers and send it to them. And um, so just having those, just looking out for these various tools that, that helps you look number one professional, right? Cause it just looks like you're put together and you know what you're doing. And then also just on the, on the, on the other hand, the customer too is like getting like the required service um, they need from you. So I advise people explore Paystack, um, see the various services that we have to offer. We like, we literally have businesses that run on Paystack only, like everything they do, they run it, they run their business from just Paystack, from the Paystack dashboard and like their insights, analytics and all of that. And um, so if the problem is people don't want to, people want to pay via transfer. We have a pay via transfer channel that you can also use like for your customers can use to make payments. Um, so yeah, I, would just, I just want to speak from the payment perspective. Yeah, I was going to ask you a question about that, Simi, because I mean, even though I'm selling a book and everything is automated, there are people still buzzing me inbox to say, oh, I'm like, just go and pay online. And then they keep, and I'm like, but this thing is online because I use, I think um, I use Seller and I think Seller leverages on Paystack actually, or Flutterweave or something like that. And But they still, how do you get people to actually use, pay, you know, online payment portals? Because I have screened and screened and I'm like, just go online will get done. Eventually I started taking, you know, direct transfers because it's like, this person is not serious. Cause once I send them the link, you know, they just go, you know, they just lose interest. So I'm like, okay, fine. Pay directly, but give me 24 hours to send yeah. you the book. Right? Because it, it takes a lot. If I want to automate a process, but the market is fighting against me automating that process. So how do I tackle that challenge? I don't think it's a challenge that can be tackled because the truth is that sometimes I would see someone who post, like a teller will post something on Instagram and put their amount there. And then you still see people come under that post to say how much. How much? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think the, the, the thing that we're also trying to do is just constantly educate people. I, I believe like if many people are still not comfortable with putting their, their, their card details online. They don't know like what channel this is. So it, on our part as a payment company, some of the things that we're doing is education, like letting people know that you know, your information is safe. Nobody's stealing your card details because I'm telling people hear stories of scam and all of that. So they're probably scared to, um, you know, put those details online. Um, I, I think it's just like, it's, 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 it's a behavior that is just very hard for people to change. There is a method they're used to. And I guess we just keep educating them and hoping that at some point, some of them will eventually become converts and they see that this is the better way to do things like instead of this other way. And maybe it's my help to have FAQs, to let them know that. The best way to get this on time is to just be online. He's, he's out there. He's out there. They don't, they don't even read it. <laughs> yes, that's one of the challenges we had to Wait, at the beginning. There, educating people, yes. There's, there's a question. There's a question for you guys. Um, you know, anyone is anyone is free to answer. As I said, um, um, how do they identify if they're on the right path and how often do they have to do whatever it, it is to check? if you know, they're on the right path with their tech processes or adopting technology. Mm. I think we'll leave that to Amor. Yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> everybody yeah. Like, Amor. Amor, okay, everybody's directing it to you. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I think, again, it, it depends on your business goals. Sorry, I'll use another. It, it depends, depends on, on your business goals, goals yeah? yeah? So um, you need to constantly track monitor and um, uh, just measure what you're doing online. So you can give, it depends on what you want to do as a business. It's something that you can decide, okay, every month I will be checking, you know, and you should, as a business, you should actually have that mechanism in place anyway, because you want to know that you are doing well. You know, in, uh, in my business, we do a monthly review, you know, um, or you can do a weekly, you can weekly review and just track whatever metrics it is you are tracking. Uh, if your, if your goal is to, everybody wants to make money, you're in business, so you want to make money, then you need to be tracking, am I actually making money from these, my efforts? Where exactly is this money coming from? Is it coming from social media? So maybe I should focus my effort on there, or is it coming from something else? You need to, you know, so you need to constantly be tracking, be monitoring. There are tools that can help you do that for free, um, depending on what you want to measure. Um, 
there are productivity tools, you know, everything helps you measure. If you're, if you're using social media, a lot of Instagram, Facebook, they have um, tools that help you track, give you insights on how you're doing. Um, if, you are, if, you're, if you have a website, you can use Google Analytics, it's free, you know, can sort of help you track how your website is doing, who is coming, where they are coming from, um, what device even, you know, it, it goes to all those small little nitty gritty details. So it depends on what you want to track, but you need to be doing this regularly, you know, depending on what you want to achieve. So I think the starting point is what do you want to achieve? You know, what's your business goal? You need to be clear on that. You know, what are your objectives? Are you giving yourself weekly objectives? Are you giving yourself monthly objecti uh, objectives or is it a yearly objective? Know what all of this is and then have the exact tools to track the right, um, so that's metrics, have the right tool, uh, tool to track the right goal, you know? And I, I hope that's answered your question. If not, just please let me know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it sure has. It sure has. Thank you so much. So, um, but very quickly, if anyone has anything to add, any final words before we get the closure remarks from the CEO of NetPlus? I guess I would just say, I mean, if you're on um, if you're on social media um, with all these things happening, I find a lot of people are watching other people and they're more focused on the likes and the comments and things like that. I would say, please focus on the conversions because it's not about the likes. It's not about, I mean, the truth is if you are depressing yourself because somebody posted something and got a thousand likes, you will be very depressed. Some people are buying likes in case you don't know, <laughs> you know, some people buy likes, some people buy followers, some people buy all sorts of things. So um, just run your race, do what you can, start small. And as time goes on, you begin when you achieve something like um, almost said, you know, if you have a goal, if you achieve that milestone, then make the effort to actually find out how else you can take your business. Don't just wait for information to fall on you. Go and look for information because when you look for information, you find what you're looking for, right? And be very close to Google. Do not be far from Google at all. If you have questions, I started from scratch. You know, I literally started from scratch. I'm talking about from scratch, like placing the tiles on the floor of my office myself with my driver. Do you understand? And I built these things little by little, little by little, because I asked questions, I was curious, and I was just running my race. So if you are not really technological, if you're not really savvy with technology, just start small, start from somewhere and just run your race. Watch others, but do not let what they're doing depress you. You know, just build on it. And before you know it, you'll become a, in quote, guru in your own field, sort of, somewhat. Uh, I think that's all I have to say. Very good. Yeah, I think so, um, piggybacking of that is will be um, for for one of the things I will leave with business owners is don't be afraid of partnerships. And Cindy tried to touch on that earlier. Um, trying to build in isolation, you wouldn't go very far, right? Um, it would interest you to know that some of the people you think are your competitors are people that will complement you. Um, most of the bank CEOs are friends and have drinks every Friday night. Don't even sure. think that the other person that is probably selling shoes um, on Instagram is like your competitor. Everybody sure. has like a path and you would find your own users with your own execution, right? And no, not one person can meet needs. Like Piggy Vest currently cannot run only on just Piggy Vest, right? Because what is it? It's just front end, back end. Um, other ways that we're, we're running the business is for us, payment partnerships is very key to us. So we have, I mean, we're friends with everybody from Paystack to Flutterwave to all of the big, all of the big payment companies are serving or, 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 or they are solving one need or particular needs for us, right? And next thing I will also talk about is your personal relationships, right? Um, your business is as great as your personal relationships with the people in the business. So you would need people to also help you with business. So don't try to be the one man show all the time. At some point, you would need to delegate. At some point, you would need to drop off stuff. At some point, you would need to be supervisory and just be looking, right? But um, if you're going to steer this and you want to be the captain of the ship, you also understand that you are a captain because you're leading people. You cannot just be a solo captain. You are just one person, right? Right. So if you want to scale your business, especially, then um, uh, you have to build your solid personal relationships. Thank you. Cool. cool. So um, basically, research is key. Payments is key. Patience is key. Explore collaboration. And Google is your best friend. Right, Tim? <laughs> okay. 
Um, I know I've learned a lot today. Um, I am so happy that I'm able to, you know, be with so many powerful, strong, brilliant-minded women to have this conversation. It is incredible. Thank you, thank you all so much for being here. Um, hopefully, there's no time, but hopefully another day we can have the opportunity to have more conversations surrounding things like this or even other, other topics. But um, as we wrap up, we have closing remarks from my boss, um, the CEO of netplus.com, brilliant mind himself, a techpreneur, a businessman, um, and he's yet to just you know, share a few words with you guys. This is Wally Farron. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining the, uh, the webinar this morning and for the participation. I, I, I listened to uh, a lot of the conversation and uh, like Jenny said, uh, I've learned a lot myself just listening to the, the brilliant minds and the brilliant ladies, uh, you know, talking uh, small business, talking technology and providing tips for for everyone. Uh, I just wanted to add that the, the idea behind the uh, Business Day Net Plus uh, monthly webinar is really to provide information and knowledge um, to, to small businesses as they think about uh, digital transformation and the sometimes very tough journey, you know, going through that. Uh, when you're starting from scratch and you're trying to adopt technology to, to drive your business, it could be very daunting. It could be, it could be scary sometimes, but I've heard uh, tips about taking it one step at a time and running your own race and running at your own pace. All these are very, very important. Uh, and that's why we do this. Uh, one, one last comment. At NetPlus, we also try, we, we, we try to provide, uh, you know, these technologies to make this easy for, uh, for, for businesses. Uh, we're, we're on the payment side and, you know, people talk about, you know, one-stop solution. What can I have in my pocket? What can I, what can I have that um, ensures that every step of the way I have what I need? I would encourage, I'll leave you guys with two tools. I would encourage people to, to, to go online and get on the netpost.com.ng it provides a lot of digital payment, um, you know, tools and solution, especially devices that you can use in, in, in taking your payments. Someone said that if you do all these things and you can't accept payment, then it's a disservice. And I agree. Uh, when, you, when you do this, you do customer service, you set up your sales, you do all these things, you want to be able to take payments seamlessly. So I encourage uh, people to check the net post uh, website and see what devices resonate with your with your business. The second tool I'll talk about is Storm. Storm is a merchant uh, app. Uh, you want to download it is on the Google Play Store and it solves problems from managing your inventory to receiving payment through uh, social media to receiving online payment. Um, whatever it is that you're trying to do uh, from a technology and payment perspective, Storm can help you with it so I, I i i leave i'll leave people with those two tools don't forget to check them out but as we round up i want to thank thank uh, business day i definitely want to say thank you to all the uh panelists that we have i i think uh going the direction of having female panelists has been a fantastic decision that we made this month i've enjoyed uh the conversation i've enjoyed the insights and i'm sure everyone on that attended uh, took something uh, out of it. Thank you very much. And we look forward to having uh, people back in April when we have another uh, panel with another uh, topic. I want to say thank you. Uh, I definitely want to say thank you. All right. Um, thank you so much, sir. So ladies, thank you once again for being here. This was really, really insightful. I am personally so grateful and so you know, thank you for the knowledge that I've got to. Um, I just wanted to mention quickly that anyone who needs this recording, it will be available on all of our social media platforms and on YouTube as well. Um, and also we will probably send links to watch the video through emails um, later on in the week. So thank you once again, and uh, I hope you will have a great, great day ahead. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.